people can look later. So, all right, so let's say we got a powder and we did the analysis and we found that uh, we found that 48%, 48% was carbon, 48% was carbon and 8.12% uh, was hydrogen, hydrogen and 53.5%. 53.5 percent oxygen oxygen so that's the bottle we got and we we did the analysis in the lab and our instrument showed me okay you have 48 percent carbon 8.12 percent hydrogen and 53.5 percent oxygen so what is that compound in that bottle that that is what i want to find right okay so again okay, what we do is we uh, uh, we just uh, look there is a 100, 100 grams. So I take the 100 grams. So the carbon I have is 48 grams. 48 grams. 48 grams. Uh, yeah. And then the hydrogen I have here is 8.12 grams. And then oxygen I have is uh, 53.5 grams. You see that? So this is the number. The uh, the instrument gave me. You see that? So, so there I put that 100 gram sample into the uh, system, and then the instrument gave me. Okay, yeah, 48 gram of the carbon, uh, 8.2 uh, gram hydrogen, and 53.5 gram oxygen. So now our job is calculate, uh, convert all these gram into moles, right? I already told you I don't need gram, so I don't need gram. So uh, I put one mole up here. And if you uh, look at the, the, the table I already made, one, uh, one mole carbon is equals to 12 grams. This comes from the periodic table, yeah? So look at the foot of the periodic table, and the, the carbon and the foot, and that shows the 12. So I put the 12 gram here. One mole up there, 12 gram here, because I want to cancel that gram and gram. And it shows me uh, four moles, you see? So if you put this gram gram cancel, 48 divided by 12 multiplied by 1 gives me 4 mole. And this one, again, hydrogen, you look at the periodic table, 1 mole of hydrogen, you will see 1 mole of hydrogen, you will see 1.000 something. So I just write 1 gram here. So you see that? So this is 1 mole hydrogen. So I'm going to write, I need mole. So I'm going to put mole up there and uh, gram down there so that I can uh, cancel the gram. Make sense? I'm repeating the same thing what we have been doing, yeah? So you see, now you can see this, this, and 8.12 multiplied by 1, divided by 1 gives you 8.12 mole of hydrogen. Make sense? Now, the time for the oxygen is 1 mole of oxygen is equal to 16 gram. This comes from the periodic Look at the oxygen, look at the foot, the biggest number, the bigger number there is 16. 16, 15999 something, so I just round that up to 16, yeah? So it is, that is, I put the mole part off because I need this mole and I need to cancel the gram. So I put the 16 gram, gram part down there. So I can gram and gram. And nobody has any questions so far. So let's see. So you multiply 53.5 by 1 and divide by 16 in calculator and you will get 3.33, uh, 3.3 mole. You see, so you got this, this number. Now my job is to divide all these three by the smallest one, right? So I, I want to divide this all by the smallest one here, you see? So which one is the smallest one? This is four, this is eight, this is 3.3. So I divide by 3.3, right? So I divide this by 3.3, I divide this by 3.3, and I divide this by 3.3. So, so put those in a calculator and you can see, uh, 1.2 here, and here you will see 2.4, and here you will see uh, 1. See, you will see 1 there. In um, I have a question. Sure. Uh, why exactly are we dividing by the smallest number? Because we want to find the simplest uh, number, Sim smallest one number, smallest is 1. So we want to compare if the smallest is one uh, compared to it uh, other element is how many i just okay. want 
to make the smallest one. So I just want to compare everything with one. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Thank you. Good. Good. So now you see my compound looks like this. So now previous was a little bit easier. So all with the whole number, right? So previous was uh, like this. You see, if if I write the previous uh, all with whole number, so I was good. But this time you see c is 1.2 so at the foot of c it goes to 1.2 and at the foot of h it goes to 2.4 and at the foot of oxygen it goes to to one you see that something like this 2.4 yes now uh what i do is uh, i try to make all numbers the whole numbers here Previously, it was easy, right? Because it's sodium carbonate. It sodium comes two, carbon comes one, oxygen was one. So all were a whole number. So at this time, there is no whole number. There is a decimal, right? So I just try to multiply with, uh, let's say, two. Can I multiply by two? If I multiply by two, it gives me 2.4, uh, 4.8, 4 and still I have point, right? So just I just try to multiply by two, three, four, five, six. So that it gives a whole number for everything, yeah. So uh, if I multiply by five to this all element, I get six here. So one point two multiply by five, you will get, get six here. And if I multiply two point four by five, you will get uh, twelve here. Just multiply two point four by five, and you will get twelve here. And multiply this oxygen one by five, and you will get five. So this is the empirical formula here. You see that C six is twelve. O five, C6 is 12 or 5. You see, so if there if uh there is a whole number here, you don't have to do anything. But if there is no whole number, try multiply by two if everything gives whole number. Try multiply by three if everything gives whole number. If doesn't give three with the whole number, uh if uh, multiplying three doesn't give whole number, multiply four. Just keep multiplying until you get a whole number, yeah. So sometimes you may not get whole number at all, so maybe. Sometimes you may get C, C, C 4.9. If you get something like that, maybe you want to make that 5, C5. You see that? So this is, a, this is uh, we find the lowest number of the ratio uh, in, the, uh, in, the, uh, in the chemical compound. But it may not be the exact chemical compound. Maybe this compound could be C12, S24, O10. Maybe this compound is like this. I don't know. But, uh, with that, uh, if I get more information, uh, I may work further, but our job here is to only work up to this. So the lowest number in this compound, the lowest number of carbon is 6, the lowest number of hydrogen is 12, and the lowest number of oxygen is 5. Yeah? But this compound may be poorly done. Maybe it's, uh, this is one unit, and maybe another unit is combined like here, like this. Maybe the, if this is a polymer like this, you see that? So you have to multiply by two, three, two to get those numbers. So I just want to uh, go up to here. So this is how we, call, we calculate the empirical formula. If the, these numbers to be whole number, you are done, right? But if these numbers don't come to be whole number, then you have to multiply by certain number. Maybe two, maybe three, maybe four, maybe five, maybe six, until uh, all number looks to be the whole number there. Yeah? Good? Alrighty, so hopefully you understand something. So I put some simple practice problem you can practice in home. So so I put one compound here. I already actually I put already this in the homework. So a compound has a, a there is a compound. So a compound has a compound has you did the analysis and you found that. that 10% was hydrogen and 90% uh, was aluminium. What is this compound? Yeah, so I gave you in homework, if you go back and look at homework 2, I give you uh, aluminium has uh, LS3, L aluminium hydride has this formula, calculate the percentage of hydrogen uh, or calculate the percentage of aluminium. This problem I gave you the homework. So this is the other way. You see that? So simple. You, you just take the, that hydrogen is uh, 10, uh, 10 gram and the uh, aluminum is 90 gram, right? You see? 90 gram. 
and you multiply that by the one mole of hydrogen is one so one mole goes up uh, one gram goes down you see then you will get uh, 10 mole of hydrogen there 10 mole of hydrogen there and this is 90 so one mole of hydrogen is 27 you can go and look the periodic table exactly same thing and just practice problem i just put there and you can just practice anything you like yes in the homework, like we don't have the percent, so do you just take like the mass and then divide by the total and multiply by 100? Exactly, yeah. So the mass of hydrogen is how much hydrogen here? Three, right? Yeah. You look the periodic table. So one is 1 1.0 something, so three would be 3.00 something, right? So this would be three, three grams. And this one is, a, if you look the periodic table, that is 27, right? Yeah, so 27, 27 grams. Now, if you add this and this, you have the total is 30 grams. So the total molecular weight is 30 grams per mole. Now, what is the percentage of aluminum? Percentage of aluminum. Aluminum is 20, total is 30, and then you multiply by 100. You see that? Yeah. Yeah, and then percentage of hydrogen uh, is, uh, uh, how many, how many grams hydrogen here? Three grams out of 30. And then you multiply by 100, and then you get the number here 10% hydrogen. Actually, I did my PhD in that aluminum hydride compound. You see, they're very simple compound. I was just trying to make that aluminum hydride decompose in low temperature so that we can use that hydrogen in the car to, to fuel up the car. So I put that, that aluminum hydride there in homework. You see that? So I spent at least two years to work uh, in that two years to working in that compound. Yeah? So it's something, something simple. So you can just uh, convert this into one mole, divide by 27, and you get another number here. So 90 by 27, you get some, some number here, let's say 3 point, uh, maybe 3.3 mole. And then you see, this is number, this is a small number. So divide both by 3.3 and 3.3. You see that a small number, you are dividing by the small number, right? And then up there you get approximately three and down there you get one you see that now al is one you got one and hydrogen you got three al is three al is three we don't write one here so the compound is al is three so in homework i give the uh, to calculate percentage and in this problem practice problem i give the percentage and you find the molecular formula by doing this is it confusing it's okay great so if any Yes, yeah, so when uh, it's something, uh, I don't know, somebody was commenting here. So please speak if you have any question there. It's a hard to read comment. So they just disappear. All right, good. So that's how we do. And there are other problems too. So you will see uh, a compound has 82% uh, nitrogen and 18% hydrogen. What is the compound? I also wrote the ammonia. So I give the answer. So just work with that and find the compound is NS3. Yeah? I put some simple problems so that you get a uh, more concept. Any question up to here? Good. Very good. Now, let's go to the chapter three. So we finished with the chapter uh, two, but uh, this kind of the problem you will see in chapter four and other, other, other chapter two. Yeah? So converting gram to mole, mole to gram moles to molecules you will you will be seeing this kind of thing all right so now i go to chapter three this is a, a chemical reaction so yeah if you have any problem you need to ask the question otherwise i don't know what you understood or what you did not understood okay so uh, or you can email me if you have any problem. I am very good at replying emails, so I reply every email. Yeah. Good. So let's see uh, this chemical reaction. So, so what is chemical reaction? Chemical reaction. So what is chemical reaction? So when you put the two chemicals together, they just rearrange the. Uh, their molecular structure. I mean, one can one combine with other, another combine with another, and uh, they give the new thing. You see, when you put the two chemicals together, they give the new things by them. Yeah. So they are called the chemical reaction. So let's say 
and these chemical reactions are represented by chemical equations. Simple. There are, um, there are some complicated equations in the book, yeah? So I really like to start with the simple so that you can easily work and you are just the, uh, not scared with the chemistry, yeah? So I just start with this, some, something simple. So you put hydrogen and oxygen together in a, in a bottle. So let's say this is a bottle and you put the hydrogen and oxygen here. Even if you put this hydrogen and oxygen millions of years inside this bottle, they don't react. This hydrogen remains hydrogen, and remains in oxygen, yeah? But if you give a small fire here, just fire it, then they immediately burn, the hydrogen burns and gives water. So, so you see, this, you need to fire the mixture of hydrogen and oxygen. You need to burn, yeah? So if, if you bring together hydrogen and oxygen together, they don't, they don't do anything. But if you put a small sm spark of fire, then they immediately explode and give energy. Yeah. So, so if you react hydrogen and oxygen, you are going to get. Now, how do how do I write this one? So you already know I teach how to write the what it gives, right? If they, these two elements combine, what it gives, right? So if you look that periodic table at the head of that one is one. If you look at the head of that periodic table. And the head of the oxygen is uh, two, right? Something like this. That's what I taught, taught last uh, last week class. So S plus S is oxygen two, and I bring this oxygen down here and one here. So that's S two. You see, that is the water, right? That's what we have been learning how to write the molecular formula. So it gives S O. You see that S O. So, how to read this uh, this equation? How to read this equation? So we have we read this equation as hydrogen reacted with oxygen and give water. That's what that's how we react, right? So we 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 read. So the hydrogen gas reacted with oxygen gas and give the water. Uh, and this side we call the left hand side we call the reactants reactants because they reacted together, so we call the reactants. And then this side, this is produced by that reaction, so this is called the product. So left side, we write the reactants, and the right side, we, we write the product. Make sense? Good. So uh, now there is another thing you, uh, you can see in the chemical reaction. So is the hydrogen gas liquid or, or kind of the, it's forming uh, in water solution? Hydrogen is a gas, right? So if you see uh, like this, Z, you see hydrogen Z, Z meaning that hydrogen is in the gas phase. Make sense? So the oxygen also is in the gas phase. You'll see Z at the, at the foot of that one. Oxygen is also gas, right? Now, at the foot of the H2O, you will see L, L meaning liquid. Make sense? So how do you read this one? Hydrogen gas. React with oxygen gas to give water liquid. That's how we, we did. Make sense? Good. So, sometimes we do the reaction in a uh, water medium, and let's say a compound is formed as a NaCl in water medium. So, uh, we, have a, we have a bottle here, and let's say we have a test tube here, and I'm doing some reaction in, in the water. We have water and I'm mixing sodium and chlorine together and sodium chloride is formed here. So in that case, since there is already water, water, so in this water medium, sodium and chloride, chlorine is being reacted with sodium chloride. So in that case, we write AQ here, AQ, aqueous, aqueous, you see that? So sodium and chlorine combine in water medium and it gives the sodium chloride. So this, if you see the AQ, in that reaction vessel, there is water. In presence of that water, the sodium and chlorine combine and give the sodium chloride. So if you see AQ there, that means that this is happening in water. Yeah? Make sense? So these are the things you can see in the uh, in the in the in the book, in the chemical reaction. So gas, gas, liquid, and if there is something is forming in presence of water, we call sodium chloride like aqueous, aqueous medium. Yeah? Good. So now I teach you a simple thing uh, that is very important. It looks simple, but very, very important. So this is called law of 
conservation of mass law of conservation of mass if you remember in the first chapter i i teach you i taught you law law of conservation of energy uh, energy is converse conserve energy cannot be destroyed cannot be created it just can be converted from one home to another right so the uh, law of conservation of the energy our first law of thermodynamics i told you here we put law of conservation of mass so no matter what we do we cannot create a uh, mass no matter what we do we can destroy the mass so we just can convert one form to another form so mass is neither destroyed nor can be created it just can be converted from one form to another so mass never changes makes sense so uh so here uh let's say i write the h2 plus o2 let's let, let's define that one. law of conservation of mass so the ma if i write a chemical reaction mass of reactant reactant is always equals to mass of products mass of products you see mass of products so let's say i put two things here in this uh, in this bottle and i measure this uh, the the whole thing and i just mix things so if thing a and thing t2 i mix them together and measure the mass and i found that this was 50 gram 50 gram right i just mix this to a and b and measure the put on the balance and i found that the mass of this was 50 gram right now i so i know that a and b react together and i found after 15 days or 30 days and uh, so this is close it's completely close and after this is first day so immediately i mix mix at zero time i just mix it and measure it and go home right and i come to the lab in 15 days later and i know a and b have reacted and I measure the mass and I again get a 50 gram. You see that? So maybe if A and B react, I get C, C and D here, but the mass is 50 gram. Now mass is 50 gram, so mass is not destroyed here. Very simple, right? Neither mass can be created nor it can be destroyed. Mass remains the same, yeah? So if the mass remains the same, so we just can't write the chemical reaction as it is. For example, let's say hydrogen i mix the hydrogen thing hydrogen is a thing a here and oxygen is thing b here you see i am just mixing two things together and i am producing water here so i mix the hydrogen and oxygen today and there was a 50 gram and after a month they did to react by some, somehow and they give this water and i uh, measure the mass and it's still a 50 gram you see that but this reaction one they cannot tell that from this reaction, uh, this this mass conservation uh, can is 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 not uh, uh, we cannot tell the mass conservation just by taking this uh, this equation. You see, hydrogen here is two, oxygen here is sixteen to thirty-two. You see that? So one oxygen is sixteen in periodic table. So two oxygen is thirty-two. One hydrogen is one, two hydrogen is two. You see. So how much is here? In the left side, I started with here. This is 34. I started with the third gram. Now, here if you see, the hydrogen is 2, oxygen is uh, 16, now I have 18. You see, that it doesn't tell anything about the law of conservation. Of Does it tell that? No, right? It, what it is saying is that I, you started with the 34 gram, hydrogen and oxygen together, and you just get 18 gram. We destroy another, uh, another uh, almost uh, 16 gram of the uh, uh, the hydrogen oxygen mass right you see this is 34 18 so we just lost some mass it cannot happen like that way the mass is always uh, constant in the reactants and the products yeah so what we should do is we try to do exactly making both sides the same so how we do that is just putting some coefficient here we, we put some number to multiply this now you see that there are two hydrogen Hydrogen two atom, here are oxygen two atom, but here is only one oxygen atom, right? Yeah, so I just want to, to make that oxygen two. So here is two, so I want that oxygen also two. You see, here is only one, right? So it's this side, only one, two, this side, two oxygen, here is only one oxygen. So what I do is, I put two here, 
I put two here so that you see how many oxygen here? Two, uh, two uh, here is one. Two multiplied by one is two. Now I have two oxygen. This side also two oxygen. But I disbalance the hydrogen. Now how many hydrogen here? You see, but two multiplied two is four. So but this side I have only two. So to make four, I may multiply this side by two. You see that now I am I am good both sides. This is the hydrogen and oxygen combining reaction is the most simplest equation, and uh, this is the most widely studied uh, equation. Yeah. So go to any laboratory, uh, the big laboratory. Everybody is trying this equation. So uh, yeah, hydrogen and oxygen because this is from the hydrogen you produce the energy to drive car and so forth, uh, fuel cell. So everybody re uh, re study this equation. It's very, it's very simple, but it's a very, very uh, important equation if you go to the higher level in future. Yeah, good. So you see, now I count the hydrogen this side. So that is two multiplied to four. Uh, this oxygen is two. Uh, the hydrogen here is four, and oxygen two and multiply two. You see that? Now this side, that uh, hydrogen is four, oxygen is two. This side, hydrogen is four and oxygen is two. Now both sides, in the right side and left side, I have the same number, of the same element. It's confusing or it's okay. So I'm just trying to multiply both sides by some numbers so that left side and right side, uh, number of atoms comes to be the, the same. So this is called the balanced chemical equation. When the chemical equation is balanced, it just gives the idea of the conservation of the mass. So you start with the. So now how do I how do I read this chemical uh, this balanced chemical equation? So now I can say two molecules of hydrogen react with one molecule of oxygen. So we can put one here. If there is nothing, we can I can put one. So how I read this equation is I am reacting two molecules of hydrogen with one molecule of oxygen to give two molecules of water. Yeah, that's how uh, we we, uh, we we read that that equation. Make sense? So one molecule, two molecule of hydrogen react with one molecule of oxygen to get two molecule of water. Or you can all this way moles, two moles of hydrogen react with one mole of oxygen to get two mole of water. So the mole is more important in this course. So in in chapter four, we'll be doing this mole conversion, mass conversion, and we'll be predicting the how many mole uh, react to give how many moles of product. So those things. So that's how we uh, we uh, we read this equation. Make sense? So no matter uh, at the beginning when you see that, so you're just uh, trying to multiply left hand side and right hand side, and putting some number uh, so that the left hand side comes to be. Uh, equal to the right hand side of that equation so that the mass and mass mass of the reactants and mass of the products are also equal yeah good so i have a question yes um so in the first equation the two in front of the h2 plus like o2 why doesn't yeah. the two in the beginning uh do anything to the o2 at the end uh, actually, you see, uh, so this is the, the beginning. You see, now beginning, we have just this this mark. There is this is the beginning. See, this is the beginning. Now uh -huh. I don't have anything here. Now I have hydrogen two here. I'm okay, but oxygen has two here. You see, or oh, two is uh, I have two oxygen atom here, but here is only one. So I need to put two here so that this oxygen become two. Now you see, oxygen is two. Now this and this. Oxygen becomes same now, but two and two I multiply that become four. But hydrogen I have only two. So if this is four, two multiply two is four. Now I must multiply this by two so that it becomes four. That's what it is saying. Oh, okay. I see. Yeah. Okay. I got it. Yeah. There is nothing here, so I I can put just one here just to say something. Okay. Two mole two molecule of hydrogen combined with one molecule of oxygen give two molecule of water, or I can see it. Two mole of hydrogen react with one mole of oxygen to give two mole of water. Okay, yeah, thank you. Good. Alrighty. So I have five minutes, so let's uh, let's try 
uh, a couple of problem here and then we'll go home yeah so it is being recorded so when you go home you can also look the same thing and then you may get a, a better ideas yeah good so Here is a question in taking uh, review and check for section 3.1. Uh, so it is writing aluminium and it is solid here, plus 3 Br2L here. And then uh, it is writing An2 Br6 and it is saying solid. So how do you read this equation? So it is saying that aluminium is solid and this one, uh, yes, three, uh, this bromine is liquid and this ABR6 is uh, solid. You see that? So solid react with liquid and give the solid. You see that? So it is asking me, uh, what are the stoio stoichiometric coefficient in this equation? Whatever you see these numbers, the number at the front, they are called stoio. What do you call it? Stoichiometric coefficient. Yeah? Stoichiometric. It's not important, but sometimes you go somewhere to work with some people and they might ask you, well, what is the stoichiometric coefficient? Yeah? So it is very good. Definitely. Stoichiometric coefficient. Coefficient. So it's asking, what is your your stoichiometric coefficient? So this is already balanced. Uh, balance equation they already balance by putting here so you see so this number this number here the front number here and there is nothing in, in front of this one so i just write it here one if there is nothing i just write one yeah so this is already balanced and they have not written one there so i just put one there so what is this to you stoichiometric coefficient here so these are called stoichiometric coefficient two three one. So these numbers are called the stoichiometric coefficient. Make sense? So whatever the number we put there for the balancing the chemical reaction, they are called stoichiometric coefficient. Now how to read this equation? Two mole of aluminium atoms reacting with the three moles of bromine molecules to give one mole of Al2Br6 uh, molecule. Al2Br6. Yeah. You can either say moles or you, or you can say molecules. Since this aluminium is only one, we call just atom for this one. Yeah. So two moles of aluminium atom is in with the three molecules or three moles of bromine mol and bromine to give one mole of Al2 Br6. So that's how we create this one. Now I just give you, I have two minute time. So it is asking one question here. If you were to use 8,000 atoms, so you see, it is asking if you have to use 8,000 atoms of aluminum. So this is 8,000. You start with the 8,000 aluminum atom. Uh, atom. How many molecules of bromine? So how many more? This one. How many you need? So I just put X here. You see? I just want to simplify so to show the, the, the math trick. So it is asking if you if you took two aluminum, you need three bromine. You see that? But if you take 8,000 of this one, how much? Uh, Br2 would you take? So you see just whatever you find, just put x up, up there in the head. Yeah. So now take the ratio. So what I do is x divided by three is equals to eight thousand divided by is two. You see? Very. I will be doing this kind of trick in the in the chapter four. Yeah. Make sense? So because it asks me how many molecules of bromine. So I just put that x there up. Uh, above that bromine, and then now you can now x would be 8000. This three goes there, and this two is two here. And if you multiply, that gives you 12,000. You see, 12,000 atoms. So, uh, 12,000 molecules. If you start with 8,000 of uh, atom of aluminium, you need 12,000 uh, molecule of the bromine. Yeah. So since it is asking me what is bromine, so I just put that x up there. So this by this is equal to this by this. And then you get that. What if the x is there? You just solve it, yeah? Is it? Good. So I think uh, 
we learned some important concept and hopefully uh, when you go home and you practice these questions and and you get more idea thank you very much everyone so i start this recording any question from online people no okay i stop then thank you very much stop. Yeah, yeah.